What are we discussing on today's podcast, you ask? Well, we are in the final home stretch for who's going to take the final spot in the D-backs rotation. So it's week four of our weekly power rankings. And then we wrap up that conversation with Sully Baseball, where we make the case against every NL team that made the playoffs last year as to why they won't make it in 2023. Wrapping it up with the San Diego Padres on today's Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. You are Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day listening to who? The always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas. I'm a multimedia journalist and I'm a graphic designer, so please go check out my website, millerthomas24.myportfolio.com. I'm there, you can see all my latest work, from my packages to my articles to my photos and my graphic design. If you want to see more content by me, just follow me on Twitter, at creatorthomas24 for my personal account, or just look up Locked on Diamondbacks, both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle, and of of course, thank you for making Locked on Diamondbacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free and available on all platforms. So please continue to tell your friends on today's episode. We're going to, oh, before we talk about today's episode, Please go hit subscribe on the Locked on Diamondbacks YouTube channel. We are slowly approaching 400 subscribers. Want to hit that mark before the new month of April. So please hit subscribe on the Locked on Diamondbacks YouTube channel. But for today's podcast, we're going to be wrapping up our conversation with Sully Baseball, discussing the NL playoff field from last year and making the cases of why they won't make it this season, wrapping up the conversation by talking about the San Diego Padres. But before we get there... Week four, we got to discuss our rotation power rankings for that number five spot because we know it's been a battle this spring training. And we got some light in this spring training battle. We finally got two clear front runners for this competition because this past week, the D-backs have optioned or reassigned. I don't know what the exact verbiage is, but they've sent away the Brandon Fots of the world and the Tommy Henrys. And guys, I feel a little bit like a dummy because... For all this time, I've been saying Brandon Fat. I just think I learned it's called Fat, not Fat. You guys are fake for never telling me that I was saying it wrong this whole time. But the D-backs have sent away the Tommy Henrys and the Brandon Fats of the world, which is a little bit surprising because if you look at the numbers, Brandon Fat was easily the best D-backs starter this spring training, at least in terms of the guys who are vying for that number five spot in the rotation because he leaves with three starts. Four appearances, a 3.75 ERA, five earned runs over 12 innings pitch. But really, the number they have to look out for, Brandon Fott, is that 15 strikeouts, just four walks and 12 innings pitch. He was by far, in a way, the best starter we had at putting away guys. And so, Brandon Fott's going to be missed. But listen, this is not going to be the final time we see Brandon Fott because he will definitely be making his debut this season with the D-backs considering what he did in the minor leagues last year. He had the most strikeouts in the minor leagues over, like, what, the past 20 seasons? It was that crazy of a year he had last year. And considering how he looked this spring training where he could probably make the argument he looked the best of all the dudes vying for that number five spot, Um, yeah. Brandon Fott will be back with the D-back sometime this season. And before the year, I probably would have told you right after the All-Star break, he would have got that Corbin Carroll treatment where he would have spent the last month, month and a half, probably final six weeks with the D-backs. Probably would have got like the Dre Jameson, Ryan Nelson treatment from last year where he makes like a few starts toward the end of the season and really gets to build up that arm strength and then get a lot more opportunity in the 2024 season, I guess, next year. But with how Brandon Fott looked this past spring training, knowing the season's coming off in the minor leagues, and Brandon Fott put together, what, two to four to five really good starts in the minor leagues, I don't think he'll be spending more than, what, six weeks in Reno? I think he could potentially get the Alec Thomas treatment where first month and a half you spend in Reno, and then maybe by mid-May, maybe by early June, you call up Brandon Fott to make his debut with the D-backs. Really excited for all the young 
rookie pitchers, all the young starting pitchers that we're going to see this season. But Brandon Fott will not win the number five job in the rotation, despite him potentially looking like the best dude this spring training. The other guy that the D-backs into way, Tommy Henry, who you all know, I was the lowest of Tommy Henry of any of these, you know, dudes who were vying for this number five. So for vying for the number five spot because I thought he had the lowest ceiling just because of his pitch arsenal. He's a low 90s kind of a pitcher and those kind of guys, I think long term, yeah, they could be your number five, number five, they could be your number four or number five starters, but they don't really have that ceiling. They can't be the anchors of your rotation. And I like dudes with a little bit more upside than Tommy Henry, but I do have to say Tommy Henry has looked really solid recently. From March 3rd to March 19th, basically in the month of March, he had a 3.6 ERA over 15 innings pitch, six earned runs. He looked really solid in the month of March. His February was terrible, four earned runs in that first start he had. But since that first start, three innings, two earned runs, four innings, zero, 3.1 over four earned runs. You don't like to see that. And then his final start, March 19th against the Royals, 4.2 innings pitch, no earned runs. Three strikeouts. Tommy Henry was dicing up some dudes with these strikeout numbers. So I think I'm a little bit more in on Tommy Henry. I still don't like him for my number five starter, but we will see Tommy Henry again this season, whether it's because of injury or maybe just performing well in the minor leagues and the D-backs want to get him called him up. So I do like Tommy Henry. I'm pro Tommy Henry. I just don't want him to be in my number five starter. But a long reliever out the pen, I think that would be a solid, solid role for Tommy Henry. But looking at Dre Jamison and Ryan Nelson, these two are the two front runners for this number five spot. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we already saw them on the major league level last season. Mike Hazen has kind of talked about that, how the fact that we've already seen these guys pitch against big leaguers definitely played into the fact that they're still here on the big league camp. And Dre Jamison is someone that we haven't seen in a minute he hasn't pitched in a big league spring training game since March 12th. He's done one of those minor league spring training games, but those stats don't go toward your spring training stats. So we haven't really seen him pitch against big league competition since March 12th. Ryan Nelson's last appearance was March 17th. And Ryan Nelson has been pitching better recently because Ryan Nelson's first start, he had four earned runs. His second start, three earned runs. But in his last two starts for Ryan Nelson, he's got seven innings pitched and only two earned runs. While Dre Jameson, his last two starts, 5.2 innings pitched and eight earned runs. So right now, Ryan Nelson is ascending while Dre Jameson is descending. But in that minor league start Dre Jameson had, he did reportedly pitch well, touched triple digits. So Right now, I think you could kind of say it's neck and neck between Dre Jameson and Ryan Nelson. I think Dre Jameson looked a little bit better in 2022, showed a little bit more stuff, had a little bit deeper of a bag, I think a little bit more Major League ready. I think there's still some more mechanical kinks to work out with the Ryan Nelson. I think there's still some more secondary stuff they want to work out with Ryan Nelson, but he's been in the lab with Brent Strom all offseason, spring training, and right now, Ryan Nelson is ascending while Dre Jameson's arrow is potentially pointing the other direction. So if I had to say right now, I think I would still have Dre Jameson as the 1A to the 1B of Ryan Nelson. But listen, opening day is not till like April 5th or 6th or 7th. I'm not entirely sure when opening day is, but it's not till like, you know, a few days into the month of April. So both of these guys should at least get one more spring training start, maybe two more spring training starts. And I think those final two starts, I think this competition will come down to the wire. I don't think no decisions have been made. Like I said, I think James, Dre Jameson is the 1A to the Ryan Nelson 1B. But as it currently stands, I think it's a coin flip between these two guys. You can say Dre Jameson's in the slight lead, but I think it's really going, going to come down to who looks good in the final stretch for spring training, who looks good this final week and a half, two weeks, because I don't think it's solidified to anyone. I don't think anyone's won the job, and Ryan Nelson's still good enough. Both of these guys are like 25 years old. Both of these guys, before pitching on the big league level last year, what they were doing in the minor leagues, both of them were kind of unimpressive. Just when you look at the raw numbers, the ERA and stuff like that, like both of them weren't lighting up the Reno aces, you know, opposing batters. And Reno is one of the toughest places to pitch, and both of them did struggle in terms of the raw numbers. And then they both looked good when they made it to major league level. And so far in spring training, they've both been pretty equal as well. So 
I don't think the competition, I, I think the competition is going to come down to the final two weeks of spring training. But if you want to look at the spring training number so far, as I'm recording this, March 21st, 6.15 p.m., the, uh, Tommy Henry is no longer with us. 5-5-1 five, five, ERA, 10 earned runs, over 16 innings pitched, 18 strikeouts to 9 walks, a 230 average allowed. Dre Jameson, a 7-4-5 ERA in four starts. Eight earned runs over 9.2 innings pitch, 12 strikeouts to three walks, where 293 average allowed. Ryan Nelson, 8-3-8 ERA, 9.2 innings pitch, nine earned runs over those 9.2 innings pitch, 10 strikeouts to six walks, and a 356 average allowed. Then Brandon Fott, he had three starts, four appearances, a 3.75 ERA, five earned runs over 12 innings pitch, 15 strikeouts to four walks, who are 195 average allowed. So just looking at the raw numbers, if you just went raw number power rankings based off spring training stats, I think you would have Fat 1, Tommy Henry 2, and then it would probably be 3A Dre Jameson, 3B Ryan Nelson. And with Tommy Henry and Brandon Fat gone, it looks like it's coming down to Jameson with Ryan Nelson. Jameson versus Nelson. I think Jameson has a slight lead right now, but I think it's going to come down to the final two weeks of spring training before anyone is declared a winner. And if you want to bet on who is going to be winning that number five job in the D-backs rotation, then you need to head to FanDuel.com to place that bet because, listen... The tournament is heating up, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. They could bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. My favorite same-game parlay to do is whenever the Lakers are on, I do AD, 25 points, AD, 10 rebounds, D low three threes, and Lakers to win. That one has been hitting less than I want to recently, and it's been a big reason why I've been losing money. But listen, you won't, you won't lose any money because you won't miss your chance to get your no sweat First bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets because you know why? You're going to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. That's right. FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to learn more. Download the FanDuel app because FanDuel, guess what? They make every moment more an official sports betting partner of the NBA.